Birds flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. Yeah, it's a new dawn, it's a new day. It's a new life for me, ooh, and I'm feeling good. Fish in the sea, you know how I feel. River running free, you know how I feel. Blossom on the tree, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. Oh, and I'm feeling good. Dragonfly out in the sun, you know how I feel. Butterflies all having fun, you know how I feel. Sleep in peace when day is done, that's what I mean. And this old world is a new world, and a bold world for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stars, when you shine. Scent of the pine, you know how I feel. Oh, freedom is mine, and I know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life. very glad to be here with you this afternoon doing the Jazz on the Move event in honor of Miss Nina Simone, I think an under-celebrated artist that I'm so happy to be asked to help to honor today. Eric has already introduced the band, so I won't do that. You know we're all here in a celebration of Women's History Month. I don't know if you mentioned that. So, yes, we want to thank you all for helping us to celebrate her this month. We'll do a song now from Nina's first album. She put out her first album in 1958, and this was a song included on that project. Uh, she had three hit songs on that project, and uh, she actually experienced a career resurgence in the mid-'80s when uh, Chanel No. 5 decided to use this song in one of their ads, so I thought it would be fitting to start with this one that sort of revived her career. Mm, my baby don't care for shows. My baby don't care for clothes mm, My baby just cares for me mm, My baby don't care for Cars and races mm, My baby don't care for High tone places Liz Taylor is not his style And even Lana Turner smile Something he can't see My baby don't care for nothing My baby just cares Thank you. 
don't care for heart on places These Taylor is not his style And even Liberace smile Oh, it's something he can't see It's something he can't see My baby don't care for nothing My baby just cares for my baby just cares for Yes, my baby just cares for me Well, Nina Simone, this is sort of going to be a teaching and uh, singing and sharing time, so we're going to kind of get into a little bit of her story, and I hope we can all come out um, appreciating her even more deeply than we did when we came in. So Nina Simone was born um, in Tyron, North Carolina, and she was actually born Eunice Wayman. Her, her birth name was Eunice Wayman. And she was born to two minister parents who were very strict and very conservative. It was a very religious home and uh, no secular music or anything like that was allowed. And she started showing a gift for music, for playing the piano very, very early on. So they decided to do some investing into her training. And she was actually considered a very rare talent and people in the community, her teachers and community leaders started to notice this. So they got together a fund and raised money to help to pay for her education. So eventually she went to Juilliard. She studied privately at Juilliard. And when she ran out of money studying at Juilliard, she was invited to apply to the Curtis Institute in uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. But unfortunately, she did not get into Curtis. And uh, she always felt like that was an issue of racism because she said that her audition had gone very, very well. And according to her and a lot of the people surrounding her, there was no real reason that that shouldn't have happened. So it always represented a real heartbreak for her, a disappointment for her, because her ultimate goal, not a lot of people knew that at the time, was to be a classical pianist. She was classically trained, and she saw that as the highest art form that she could possibly have pursued. So, but she always found a way to sort of integrate classical music into her songs, and I'm sure you hear it occasionally when she'll, she'll play. Sometimes she'll throw in a little classical flair. So the song we want to do now for you Love Me or Leave Me is one where she does a very extended solo, a classical solo on the uh, album recording of it. So I've actually asked Matt to kind of echo that just a little bit. I told him don't get carried away. I think the word I used was bloviate. Don't bloviate, Matt. <laughs> but, uh, but we want to hear a little bit of that flair that Nina decided to throw in on, on this particular tune. So this is Love Me or Leave Me. You won't believe me, but I love you only I'd rather be lonely than happy with somebody else You might find the night time's the right time for kissing Night time is my time for just reminiscing Regretting instead of forgetting with somebody else There'll be no one unless that someone is you I intend to be independently blue Hey, hey, hey. I want to love, but don't want to borrow Having today to give back tomorrow My love is your love, there's no love for nobody else
you won't believe me, but I love you only. I'd rather be lonely than happy with somebody else. Mm, you might find the night time's a right time for kissing. Night time is my time for just reminiscing. Regretting instead of forgetting with somebody else. There'll be no one unless that someone is you. I intend to be independently blue. Hey, 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 I want to love, don't want to borrow. Have it today to give back tomorrow. Your love is my love. My love is your love. There's no love for nobody else. decided once she was rejected from the Curtis Institute. By the way, her piano teacher uh, was interviewed as saying he did not feel that her not being accepted into the Curtis Institute was a matter of racism. So it was something that was never really fully understood, but that was how Nina felt about it, and that was how her family felt about it. So it greatly influenced her work with the civil rights movement later on, that feeling of early rejection for that reason. Uh, but she decided to start playing clubs in the Northeast, in Philadelphia, in New York, just as a way of supporting herself once she was rejected. Her whole family had moved up to Philadelphia with the expectation that she would be received by this institute that she was not received by. So they were struggling quite a bit financially. So Nina decided to start playing locally at clubs. And because her parents were ministers, her mother in particular was not accepting of the idea of her playing any sort of popular music, she decided to change her name. She started using the name Nina Simone. Uh, her boyfriend at the time nicknamed her Nina. So that was the reason she took that on as her first name. And then there was an actress named Simone Signore that she really loved. And so she took that on as her last name. So she became Nina Simone just for the purpose of hiding the fact that she was playing at clubs from her mom. So, but the name stuck. So early on, Nina played quite a bit of uh, folk music. She was accepted quite a bit by the folk scene. So we're going to do one of the folk songs that Nina started out uh, playing very, very early on. This one's called Little Liza Jane, a fun little number. Ready? I get to play the tambourine, so I really like it. I got a bow, you ain't got none, little Liza Jane. I got a bow, you ain't got none, little Liza Jane. I got a bow, you ain't got none, little Liza Jane. Oh, little Liza, little Liza Jane. Oh, little Liza, little Liza Jane. Come, my love, and live with me. I will take good care of you, little Liza Jane. Oh, come, my love, and live with me. I will take good care of thee, little Liza Jane. Oh, little Liza, little Liza Jane. Oh, little Liza, little Liza Jane. He took me to this great big town. Lots of people standing around. They're listening to a great big band. The bestest music in the land. I tell you once, I tell you twice. Enjoy yourself and live a life. The lies are changing, the little lies of the lies are changing, the little lies of the lies are changing, the little lies of the lies are changing, the lies are changing. Oh, little lies of little lies are changing. Oh, little lies of little lies are changing. Oh, little lies of little lies are changing.
Nina was starting to experience a bit of success on the local scene in New York at that time in the mid-50s, in the uh, mid to late 50s. And so she recorded a song at the request of a friend of hers, and a song that she didn't even really like that much, but someone requested that she recorded it, and it caught on as a single, and it was the basis for getting her first album started. So this was her very first hit, and still to this day, was the biggest hit that she ever had. It was the only song that made it into the top 20 in the United States. This is I Love You, Porgy. I love you. Don't let him take me Don't let him handle me Nina knew a little bit from personal experience, or she would come to know from personal experience, what those hot hands were all about that was spoken of in that, uh, in that song. She ended up getting, getting married in 1961 when she was first starting to experience success to a man named Andy Stroud, who uh, unfortunately beat her pretty badly. It was kind of an Ike and Tina situation, unfortunately. Um, he ended up being her manager, and he kept her business in line and that kind of thing. Um, so in that sense, he helped to drive her career forward for about the next 10 years. They stayed married. Um, but she was terribly abused at home, and she had a daughter in uh, 1962 named Lisa. So I want to do a song now that was actually written by her husband that ended up being a little bit autobiographical for her. Unfortunately, it starts out very hopeful. Um, and towards the middle of the song, it just gets a little bit darker and a little bit darker as it goes along. So I think Nina knew a little bit about what she was talking about here. This is Be My Husband.
Spell on you. Because you're mine. You better stop the things you do.
Well, Nina Simone, as you all probably know, became a uh, major advocate in the uh, civil rights movement, a major activist and advocate for civil rights. And uh, you may be surprised, though, to know that she was kind of a reluctant entrant, entrant into that movement. She got involved right around 1963, and she was being pulled on by her contemporaries, people like Langston Hughes and uh, Sammy Davis Jr., Harry Belafonte, others who were super involved with the civil rights program, to become more involved and sing more of that music. But she was, she was a little bit reluctant, and I think her husband was hesitant uh, as well, because it was not music that would necessarily sell. But there was an event that happened in 1963, uh, a bombing that happened in a church in uh, Selma, Alabama. Four little girls were killed when they were in the basement of a church um, by white supremacists that were upset because of the issue of school integration. A ruling had just come down that schools would have to be integrated, and they were upset about that, put a bomb in a church, in a black church, and it turned out that there were four little girls having Bible study in the basement, and they were killed because of this act. So this really incensed many people all over the country, but Nina in particular, and that was what provoked and sparked her entrance into the civil rights movement. So because Nina grew up in the church, and she grew up hearing uh, very meaningful music, and she was focused on classical music as well, she always saw the music that she was singing as a bit beneath her station. It was never anything that really excited her. She just did it because she was initially, she just was making a living. But once she found civil rights music, she found a deeper sense of meaning. She felt that her, that cause needed her. So she was very, very um, excited to enter that movement once she finally did. So once, she, once that part of her was unleashed and she started writing about this music, there was no going back. An artist's duty, as far as I'm concerned, is to reflect the times. I think that is true of, of, of painters, sculptors, poets, musicians. I, as far as I'm concerned, it's their choice. But I choose to reflect the times and the situations in which I find myself. That, to me, is my duty. I, and, and at this crucial time in our lives, when everything is so desperate, when every day is a matter of survival, I don't think you can help but be involved. Young people, black and white, know this. That's why they're so involved in politics. We will shape and mold this country, or it will not be molded and shaped at all anymore. So I don't think you have a choice. How can you be an artist and not reflect the times? That, to me, is the definition of an artist. But that's just the trouble. Too slow. Desegregation. Too slow. Mass participation. Too slow. Reunification. Too slow. Do things gradually. Too slow. Would bring more tragedy. Too slow. Why don't you see it? Why don't you feel it? I don't know. I don't know. Nina Simone wrote some of the most indelible anthems of the civil rights movement. She risked her career, her livelihood, and she resigned her position as one of the rising stars in jazz to take up the mantle of activism. There was no other artist at that time that was writing the kind of direct, pointed, provocative material that Nina was, not one and she paid dearly for it. She lost bookings, she lost friends, even within the civil rights movement. But many would agree that her music has aged well. It's resonated with future generations of activists who identify with those daring messages. One such song tells the story of four black women, each bearing their own unique burden. Four women. Four Negro women, each one has a different color. Jaune, noir, blue, correct? Blue. Je parle français un peu. Deeper. 
So I hope you understand this. It is a picture of four different women. skin is black My arms are long My hair is woolly My back is strong Strong enough to take the pain Inflicted again and again What do they call me? My name is Aunt Sarah Aunt Sarah rich and white He forced my mother late one night What do they call me? My name is Saffronia My name is Saffronia
Cinnamon, where you gonna run to, Cinnamon? Where you gonna run to, Cinnamon? Where you gonna run to all on that day? Well, I run to the rock. Please hide me, I run to the rock. Please hide me, I run to the rock. Please hide me all on that day. But the rock cried out, I can't hide you, the rock cried out. I can't hide you, the rock cried out Ain't gonna hide your car all on that day I said, rock, what's the matter with you, rock? Don't you see I need you, rock? Lord, 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 all on that day So I run to the river It was bleeding, I run to the river It was bleeding, I run to the river it was bleeding, Lord, all on that day Then I ran to the sea It was boiling, I ran to the sea It was boiling, I ran to the sea It was boiling, Lord, all on that day So I ran to the Lord Please hide me, Lord Don't you see me praying, Lord Don't you see me down here praying Oh, but the Lord said, go to the devil, the Lord said, go to the devil, the Lord said, go to the devil, all on that day. Oh, I ran to the devil, and he was waiting, I ran to the devil, he was waiting, I ran to the devil, and he was waiting, Lord, all on that day. And I cried, power. Simone had a lot of success through the 1960s, although she was never the popular artist. 
that she could have been because of the controversial music that she did with the civil rights uh, movement. And she was also dealing with some personal issues. She was dealing with issues of mental illness. And they wouldn't know until much later on that she was really dealing with bipolar disorder. All that people knew at the time was that she was very unpredictable. She dealt with a lot of hallucinations. She was a kind of a Jekyll and Hyde personality. She was very volatile and at times even violent. People describe her that way. She started to really lose touch with uh, reality. So her career started to wane a little bit in the late 60s and her marriage, of course, with it being so abusive, was getting to be a very, very difficult situation for her. So she eventually broke away, left her husband and left her daughter, and she moved away to a small uh, African country, a settlement called in uh, Liberia. And she said there she was the happiest that she had ever been in her life. So she stayed there for a few years, through probably the mid-70s, started to run out of money eventually, and knew that she was going to have to do something career-wise to be able to support herself. So she ended up moving to uh, Switzerland, stayed there for a little while, then moved to uh, Paris, where she settled in for a time. And she became really quite destitute in the late 70s and early 80s. People describe her as having the appearance of almost a street, a street urchin or a street, street person. She lived in a small little apartment. She wasn't completely homeless, but it was a very dilapidated apartment because she really had no real means to support herself. So she eventually started playing small clubs where she would play for hours and hours, and they would pay her maybe two or three hundred dollars and were really taking advantage of her because of her uh, decreased mental state. So a friend of hers uh, reached out to her when he saw her in this condition and said, I want to help you. I want to help you revitalize your career and to be the... Uh, the grand star that you have always been and can continue to be. So with his help, she started to um, get a little bit better management because once her husband was out of her life, um, she just wasn't really able to manage her money or her career in any real way. So thankfully, a friend of hers came along and started to help her get some better dates and uh, help to revitalize her career. And as I said before, she kind of had a revitalization of her career that happened in the mid to late 80s, thankfully. But you have to wonder what might have been able to happen with her career if she had not dealt with all of these personal challenges. Would the genius still have remained? One never really knows, but we can, uh, we can always speculate. But this is one I'm sure she would have identified with. Don't let me be misunderstood. Maybe you understand me now. Sometimes you see that I'm mad Don't you know no one alive can always be an angel When everything goes wrong you see some bad But I'm just a soul whose intentions are good Oh Lord, please don't let me be you know, sometimes, baby, I'm so carefree with a joy that's hard to hide. And then sometimes, again, it seems that all I have is worry. And then you're bound. See my other side, but I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. If I seem edgy, I want you to know I never mean to take it out on. problems and I've had more than my share but that's one thing I never mean to do cause I love you oh, oh, oh baby I'm just human oh you know I have faults like anyone sometimes I find myself alone some little foolish thing 
some simple thing that I've done. But I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh Lord, please don't let me be misunderstood. Don't let me be misunderstood. But please don't let me be Well, when I first heard that this um, celebration of Nina was going to be happening during uh, Women's History Month, the first thing that occurred to me was, well, I think maybe that's more of, a, it's maybe more of a Black History Month kind of thing. It just didn't quite make sense to my brain because she was so busy in that movement in the 60s. And uh, then I watched an interview um, that was done in right, right around 1985, 86, when she was experiencing this resurgence, probably 87, 88. And uh, the interviewer asked her about the civil rights songs and all of that, the protest music. And she said, well, you know, sometimes I, I wish that I were not as identified with that music as I am. She said, I feel like that's, that's the only thing that people know me for. And that's one reason why my career has floundered because that movement is no longer, she didn't feel like it was relevant at the time. Everybody had moved on. And so many people had died from that era that she knew, uh, including her friend Lorraine Hansberry, who wrote Raisin in the Sun. She was a very good friend of hers and a very strong activist in the civil rights movement. And she was very, feeling very dejected and very alone at that time in her um, identification with that movement. And she said, sometimes I wish that people knew that I was a woman as well. And that kind of struck me as, as interesting because I think in that era where she became so well known and she was experiencing her prime in music and writing those amazingly powerful songs for a black woman, I think, in 1965 or so, I don't think they had the luxury of being feminists. I don't think a black woman at that time could say, I'm a woman first, in the way that she did 20 years later. I think you had to choose, and I think Nina chose. She chose the movement that she felt needed the most attention at that time. But by the 80s, she kind of wanted to shift and soften her image a little bit and be recognized as the woman that she was, and to be able to sing love songs because that was a big part of who she was too. If you've ever seen video of her, she's always so beautifully made up. I mean, Nina was very powerful, and she was very resolute in her message, but Nina was all woman. So we're going to do a song now, an iconic love song. One of the songs that I get requested most, honestly, Peel Me a Grape is one of my top requested songs. Uh, what's the Nancy Wilson, Guess Who I Saw Today? And this particular song here by Nina Simone, I want a little sugar in my bowl. Thank you. 
clothes Maybe I could fix things up so they'll go What's the matter, Daddy? Come on, save my soul I want some sugar in my bowl I'm not fooling, I want some sugar Well, someone uh, wrote me the other day, uh, Elena, Elena Anderson, who's a singer here in Nashville, she wrote me the other day and asked me, she said, what song are you most looking forward to singing at the Nina show? And without even thinking, I said this next song. We're going to do uh, one gospel song of Nina's that's not actually terribly well known, but it's one that I just love hearing her sing, so I wanted to present it for you today. As I said earlier, Nina grew up singing in the church, so gospel was a big part of what she did, and she didn't mind incorporating it into her shows. Nina could make all kinds of music live together. She could sing blues right alongside gospel, right alongside jazz, right alongside soul and R&B, and throw in classical to boot. Nina was so many different things, which is one thing, one reason uh, that she is completely unique. She just is who she is, and she's unclassifiable, which is uh, one thing I think a lot of us admire about her. So we're going to do uh, some of the gospel of Nina Simone. This one's called Nearer Blessed Lord. Draw 
must hold My will is lost in night So draw me nearer Yeah Dear blessed Lord To the cross For it's such just a, a feeling. It's just a feeling. It's like, how do you tell somebody how it feels to be in love? How are you going to tell anybody who has not been in love how it feels to be in love? You cannot do it to save your life. You can describe things, but you can't tell them. But you know it when it happens. That's what I mean by free. I've had a couple of times on stage when I really felt free. And that's something else. That's oh. really something <laughs> else. Like all, all, like, like, I'll tell you what freedom is to me. No fear. I mean, really, no fear. If I, if I could have that half of my life, no fear. Lots of children have no fear. That's the closest way, that's the only way I can describe it. That's not all of it. But it is something to really, really feel. <laughs> have you, have you, like, no. I've noticed Like that. a new way of seeing. Like a new way of seeing something. Way overdue 
Thank you.